I caught my husband cheating with my sister who I was financially supporting. When I started dating again, they both came crawling back broke and desperate. I'm Lily, 30F, and I never thought I'd be sharing my story on Reddit, but here I am. I've been married to Ryan, 32M, for four years now. We met in college, I was studying accounting, and he was pursuing his passion for music. Back then, Ryan was in a local band, playing gigs at bars and small venues. I was drawn to his carefree spirit and infectious enthusiasm for life. We were opposites in many ways, but I thought that's what made us work. After graduation, I landed a job at a prestigious accounting firm, while Ryan continued to chase his music dreams. He worked part-time as a guitar instructor to make ends meet. I supported his ambitions, believing that with time and effort, he'd make it big. We got married two years after college in a small ceremony with close friends and family. The first couple of years of our marriage were good. We had our ups and downs, but we always managed to work through our issues. I was climbing the ranks at my firm, putting in long hours and weekends. Ryan was still gigging with his band, but the big break he was hoping for never came. I could sense his growing frustration, but I tried to remain supportive. Things started to change about a year ago. Ryan's band broke up, and he seemed lost. He took on more guitar students but spent most of his free time moping around the house. I suggested he look for a steady job, maybe in music production or teaching at a school, but he always brushed off my ideas, saying I didn't understand his dreams. Around this time, my younger sister Mia, 25F, moved to our city. She'd always been the free spirit in our family, jumping from one passion project to another. Our parents worried about her lack of direction, but I admired her zest for life. Mia decided she wanted to become a lifestyle influencer and I, being the supportive big sister, offered to help her get started. I let Mia stay with us for a few months while she got settled. During this time, I noticed Ryan perking up. He seemed more engaged, often chatting with Mia about music and social media. I was happy to see him coming out of his funk, so I didn't think much of it. As Mia's social media presence grew, so did her expenses. She was always talking about needing the latest gadgets or designer clothes for her posts. Being in a good financial position, I offered to help her out. I covered her rent when she moved into her own place and often bought her the items she claimed were essential for her influencer career. Ryan sometimes questioned why I was spending so much on my sister, but I brushed it off as sibling support. About six months ago, I started noticing changes in Ryan. He was spending more time on his phone, often smiling at the screen. He began going out more, claiming he was networking for potential music gigs. His appearance changed too, he started dressing better, wearing cologne, and even got a new haircut. At first, I was pleased, thinking he was finally pulling himself out of his slump. But then other things started to bother me. Ryan became distant, often making excuses to avoid spending time together. Our intimacy dwindled, and when I tried to talk about it, he changed the subject or say he was just stressed about his career. He started coming home late, smelling of alcohol and sometimes perfume. I tried to ignore the signs, making excuses for his behavior. Maybe he was going through a midlife crisis? Maybe he was just trying to reinvent himself? But deep down, I knew something was wrong. The final straw came when I overheard a phone conversation. Ryan thought I was asleep, but I heard him whispering in the living room. I can't wait to see you tomorrow, he said, followed by, I love you too. My heart shattered. I confronted him the next morning, and after some back and forth, he admitted to having an affair. What he said next, though, was what truly broke me. He said he'd fallen in love with someone who understood his dreams, someone who lived an exciting life that he wanted to be part of. He said our life together was too mundane, too predictable. He wanted out. I was devastated. I asked him to leave, which he did without much protest. It was only a week later, when my best friend called me in a panic, that I discovered the full extent of the betrayal. She had seen Ryan out at a trendy restaurant, looking cozy with none other than my sister, Mia. I couldn't believe it. My husband and my sister? The two people I had supported and loved unconditionally had betrayed me in the worst possible way. I was angry, hurt, and felt like a complete fool. All those times I had paid for Mia's expenses, I had essentially been funding their affair. I immediately cut off all financial support to Mia. I changed the locks on our house and told Ryan to communicate only through my lawyer. I blocked both of them on all social media and asked my friends and family not to give me any updates about their lives. It's been a month since then. I'm still processing everything, trying to figure out how to move forward. The divorce proceedings have started, and I'm focusing on my work and my own healing. But I can't help but wonder, how did I not see this coming? Was I too blind, too trusting? Or were they just that good at deceiving me? I guess I'm sharing this because I need to get it off my chest. 
I feel like I've lost not just my husband, but also my sister and best friend. How do I even begin to rebuild my life after such a betrayal? Update 1 It's been 3 months since my last post, and a lot has happened. First, I want to thank everyone for their supportive comments and messages. Your kindness has been a lifeline during this difficult time. The divorce proceedings are moving forward, albeit slower than I'd like. Ryan is contesting the division of assets, claiming he's entitled to half of everything, including my savings and the house I bought before we were married. My lawyer assures me he doesn't have a strong case, but it's still frustrating and draining. As for Mia and Ryan's relationship, it seems the fantasy has worn off rather quickly. About a month after my last post, I received a call from Mia. She was crying, begging for my forgiveness. According to her, Ryan had become controlling and manipulative. He had moved into her apartment, which I used to pay for, and was pressuring her to use her influencer status to promote his music career. Mia claimed that she never meant for things to go this far with Ryan. She said it started as innocent flirting, but Ryan pursued her aggressively, filling her head with promises of a glamorous life together. She admitted to being flattered by the attention and caught up in the excitement. She also confessed that she had always been a bit jealous of my stable life and career and being with Ryan made her feel like she was winning for once. I listened to her sob story but felt no sympathy. I reminded her that she was a grown woman who made her own choices, and those choices had consequences. I told her that while I might forgive her someday, I would never forget what she did, and our relationship would never be the same. I then hung up and blocked her number. A week after Mia's call, I received a text from an unknown number. It was Ryan. He said he had made a huge mistake and wanted to talk. I ignored it, but the messages kept coming. He claimed that Mia had seduced him, that she had manipulated him with her influencer lifestyle, he said he realized now that what we had was real and that he wanted to work things out. I was tempted to reply, to unleash all the anger and hurt I had been holding in. But instead, I forwarded the messages to my lawyer and blocked the number. I realized that engaging with either of them would only bring more pain and drama into my life. On a more positive note, I've been focusing on rebuilding my life. I've thrown myself into my work and last month I received a promotion to senior accountant. The increased responsibilities and challenges have been a welcome distraction. I've also been reconnecting with old friends and making new ones. I joined a local book club and a hiking group, pushing myself out of my comfort zone. It's been scary at times, but also exciting to rediscover who I am outside of my relationship with Ryan. One unexpected development came from an old college friend, Alex, 31M. We bumped into each other at a coffee shop, and he invited me to catch up. Over coffee, I found myself opening up about everything that had happened. Alex was incredibly supportive and understanding. He shared that he had gone through a tough breakup a year ago and could relate to the pain I was feeling. Since then, Alex and I have been hanging out regularly. It's strictly platonic, I'm nowhere near ready for a new relationship, but it's nice to have someone to talk to who understands. He's been encouraging me to try new things and has even convinced me to start learning photography, something I've always been interested in but never pursued. As for Mia's influencer career, it seems to have taken a hit. I heard through mutual friends that she lost several sponsorship deals after some of her followers found out about the affair. Last I heard, she had moved back in with our parents, tail between her legs. Ryan, on the other hand, seems to be struggling. A mutual friend reluctantly told me that he's been bouncing between friends' couches, unable to afford rent on his own. His guitar students have dwindled, many of them uncomfortable with the drama surrounding him. He's been trying to book gigs at local bars, but his reputation has taken a hit in our small music scene. Part of me feels a sense of satisfaction knowing they're facing the consequences of their actions. But mostly, I just feel sad. Sad for the life I thought I had, sad for the sister I thought I knew, and sad for the man I thought I'd spend my life with. But I'm also hopeful. For the first time in months, I'm excited about the future. I don't know what it holds, but I know I'm strong enough to face it on my own terms. I'm learning to trust myself again, to value myself, and to set boundaries. It's a slow process, but I'm getting there, one day at a time. Thank you all again for your support. I'll update again if anything significant happens, but for now, I'm focusing on moving forward and creating a life I love, with or without a partner. Update 2 It's been another 3 months, and I'm back with another update. Life has been a roller coaster, but I'm happy to report that things are looking up. First, the divorce is finally settled. Ryan eventually realized he didn't have a leg to stand on and agreed to my terms. I kept the house and my savings, while he got to keep his music equipment and the car. It was a relief to have it over with, to finally cut that last legal tie to my past. The day after the divorce was finalized, I decided to treat myself. I booked a solo trip to a beach resort, something I've always wanted to do but never had the courage to. 
It was a transformative experience. For the first time in over a year, I felt truly relaxed and at peace. I spent my days reading on the beach, trying new foods, and even went scuba diving for the first time. It was exactly what I needed to close one chapter of my life, and start a new one. When I returned home, I felt refreshed and ready to tackle life head-on. I threw myself into my new photography hobby, and to my surprise, I discovered I had a real talent for it. I started an Instagram account to share my photos, and it's been growing steadily. It's ironic, considering how Mia's influencer career panned out, but I'm enjoying it as a creative outlet rather than a career move. Speaking of Mia, I received a letter from her about a month ago. She's still living with our parents and has started taking online classes in marketing. In her letter, she apologized again for her actions and said she was in therapy, working on her issues with jealousy and self-esteem. She asked if we could try to rebuild our relationship. I haven't responded yet. Part of me wants to give her another chance, but another part is still too hurt. I'm taking my time to think it over. As for Ryan, I heard through the grapevine that he's moved to a bigger city to try and restart his music career. Apparently, he's been playing open mic nights and trying to network with local musicians. I wish him well, but I'm glad he's no longer in my immediate orbit. On the personal front, something unexpected has happened. Remember Alex, my old college friend? Well, our friendship has been growing stronger over the past few months. We've been spending a lot of time together, and I found myself looking forward to our meetups more and more. Last week, Alex asked me out on a proper date. I was hesitant at first, worried about rushing into something new. But after giving it some thought, I decided to take a chance. We went to a lovely Italian restaurant and then took a walk in the park. It was a perfect evening, filled with great conversation and laughter. I'm not rushing into anything, and Alex understands that. We've agreed to take things slow and see where it leads. But for the first time since my marriage fell apart, I'm excited about the possibility of a new relationship. Work has been going well too. My promotion has opened up new opportunities, and I'm being considered for a management position. It's challenging, but I'm enjoying the chance to prove myself and grow professionally. Looking back on the past year, I'm amazed at how much has changed. There were moments when I thought I'd never be happy again, when the pain of betrayal felt like it would swallow me whole. But here I am, standing on my own two feet, stronger than ever. I've learned so much about myself through this ordeal. I've discovered a strength I never knew I had. I've learned the importance of self-love and self-respect. I've realized that while it's good to support others, it should never come at the cost of my own well-being. I'm not saying everything is perfect. I still have moments of sadness and anger. I'm still working on trusting others and opening my heart again. But I'm proud of how far I've come, and I'm excited about where I'm going. To anyone out there going through something similar, hang in there. It gets better. Focus on yourself, surround yourself with positive people, and don't be afraid to try new things. You're stronger than you know. Thank you all again for your support throughout this journey. Your kind words and encouragement have meant more than you could ever know. Here's to new beginnings and brighter days ahead. Update 3 Hello everyone, it's been 6 months since my last update, and I'm back with some news. Life has continued to evolve in ways I never expected, and I'm excited to share the latest developments with you all. First, let's talk about my relationship with Alex. I'm happy to report that things have been going wonderfully. We've been dating for about 7 months now, and it feels right in a way my relationship with Ryan never did. Alex is supportive, kind, and we share similar values and life goals. He encourages my photography and has even started learning with me. We recently took a weekend trip to a national park, combining hiking with a photography expedition. It was amazing to share my newfound passion with someone who genuinely appreciates it. On the career front, I've got some big news. I was offered and accepted the management position at my firm. It's been challenging but incredibly rewarding. I'm learning new skills every day and feel like I'm making a real impact. The increased responsibility and salary have also allowed me to start thinking about future plans, like buying a bigger house or possibly starting my own accounting firm someday. My photography hobby has turned into something more as well. A local gallery saw my Instagram and invited me to participate in a group exhibition for emerging artists. It was surreal to see my photos displayed on a gallery wall. I even sold a few prints. I'm not quitting my day job, but it's exciting to have this creative outlet that's also being recognized. Now, for the more complicated part of my update. After much thought, I decided to respond to Mia's letter. We met for coffee last month. It was awkward and emotional, but I'm glad we did it. Mia seems genuinely remorseful and has made significant changes in her life. She's halfway through her marketing degree and has a part-time job at a local business. We're not back to being best friends, and I don't think we ever will be but we're cautiously rebuilding our relationship. 
It's a slow process, and I'm maintaining firm boundaries, but it feels good to have my sister back in my life in some capacity. As for Ryan, I haven't heard from him directly, but I did stumble across his new band's social media page. It looks like he's found some success in the bigger city. His band is playing regular gigs and has even released an EP. While I don't wish him ill, I'm glad our paths have diverged. Seeing his updates no longer brings me pain, instead, I feel a sense of closure. Looking back on the past year and a half, it's hard to believe how much has changed. The betrayal I experienced was painful beyond words, but it also served as a catalyst for growth and self-discovery. I've built a life I love, filled with meaningful work, creative pursuits, and genuine relationships. I've learned that happiness isn't about having a perfect life, it's about appreciating what you have and continuously working on becoming the best version of yourself. The journey hasn't been easy, but I'm proud of how far I've come. To those who are still in the midst of their own struggles, I want to say this, it gets better. It may not feel like it now, but time, self-reflection, and the courage to make changes can lead you to a life more fulfilling than you ever imagined. Don't be afraid to lean on others for support, but also learn to stand on your own two feet. I'm not sure what the future holds, but for the first time in a long time, I'm excited to find out. I'm open to the possibilities life has to offer, whether that's advancing further in my career, exploring my artistic side, or seeing where my relationship with Alex goes. Thank you all for being a part of this journey with me. Your support and kind words have been a source of strength during my darkest times. While this might be my last update on this particular chapter of my life, I'll always be grateful for the community I found here. Here's to new beginnings, self-discovery, and the beautiful unpredictability of life. Whatever challenges you're facing, remember, you are stronger than you know, and there's always hope for a brighter tomorrow.